Well, it's certainly taken us a while to get to this point, and we've learned a lot along the way. It's, uh, it's been frustrating and exciting, enlightening, challenging, as we've gone through all these different steps to get to this point. But I think we're really starting to get it dialed in here uh, for certain. There's no doubt about it. We still have more to learn, a long way to go. In fact, probably a lifetime worth of learning when it comes to growing things sustainably uh, as we're trying to do. But I think we're on the right path. So uh, behind me uh, is the fruit of all of our labor here. I'm going to grab the camera here in a moment, and we're going to walk through each station. Um, but here is the packing station, and behind you on the camera, you can't see it, uh, is the refrigerator. So this is the last step in the process, and you go from here right into the fridge. So very much using the lean principles of manufacturing here, trying to make uh, an assembly line uh, that we can quickly go through and process lots of greens. So, the tables are a great addition, and again, it was cheaper for me to buy these tables than it is to build tables and then to coat the table with stainless steel or Teflon, which are food safe. Um, so uh, I'm very happy with these purchases. They came with an extra shelf. They're nice and sturdy. I need to put some blocks underneath them, kind of bring a little more level, a little more plumbing, uh, if you will, but uh, it all turned out really nice. So let's grab the camera, walk through the line, and talk about each of the stations. So the first station that we have uh, is actually the last uh, station that's uh, um, used, but it's in the right spot here. This is the cleaning station. Uh, it's just an IBC tote uh, with the top cut out, and the drain is in the back there. Uh, and what we do is we put all the, um, the containers and the trays that the microgreens are growing in. We put them all in here, and then we pressure wash them all off, and the water and the dirt drains out through the bottom there. Let me show you a little closer. There's the drain. There's the pressure washer right there. It's an electric pressure washer. And it does take 14 amps when it's at full pressure. We don't use full pressure. Uh, so the rule is everything else has to be shut off on the processing lane when you use that uh, particular device. So it's, it's definitely an energy hog, but it's uh, really what we need. The gas pressure washer wouldn't work because you have to start it every time and run it. You have fumes in here, but the electric is on demand. You know, if I want it, I just go grab it and spray it off. So this is the cleaning station. Uh, it's the last thing. It's where we put everything to get it all washed out and cleaned. Um, this is a food safe, food grade container that we bought. Uh, it's not one that stored bad chemicals or anything in it. These are certified for food grade, so that's why we're using them. Uh, let's see, lessons learned as far as things that we need to do to improve um, the drain. I'll show you that again. Kind of, you know, it would be better if it was in the center and uh, gravity drained down. Right now it goes out and down into the drain line there. Uh, it needs to have a filter on it, something, a screen uh, that catches the microgreens because that's been plugging it. And that's just a pure oversight on my part. Uh, so you need to put that in there and we'll, we'll get that figured out. Let's look at the next station. So this is the uh, cutting and the planting uh, station. Uh, it's about what, almost a little over 12 feet long. Uh, you can fit uh, 20, a whole bed's worth of trays up here side by side. Uh, so we can definitely do the 18 trays per hour. And the idea is you go collect all your trays, you put them down, you cut them all, and then we actually have uh, another food grade container right there and you dump you dump your greens into that and then you take them to the next station so again this is the stainless steel as uh, the pro the packaging center up front uh, very nice very easy to clean uh, and take care of so very very happy with this uh, and lots of shelf space it's at the right height for ergonomics it can be very nice so you you cut everything on it and then after you clean your trays you put them all back up here and you plant them and uh, so you got plenty of surface area to do all your planting. There's the electric pressure washer. Thing's pretty nice. It's got a reel on it, so we can pull out all the hose and then reel it back up, and then uh, on like that, put it back. Uh, very, very nice. So uh, we also use a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and water. So when we're all done with everything, we, we clean it all off with the pressure washer and then we spray it all down with a hydrogen peroxide mixture and let that sit and that uh, kills all the bad stuff. Here is the bubbler system. Uh, so what we've got here, we've got the water inlet. Just turn that on and you start filling. And then we have it on a timer switch here. So you come up 
Just hit one there for one minute. And it's all good. So this works really, really well. Uh, one of the problems that we have with it is just in cleaning it. Um, we need the uh, filter on the drain. This is again a food safe IBC tote, but the drain is right back there. And same thing, the greens and stuff that you don't get when you're harvesting, uh, they collect in it and clog it all. So um, again, just an oversight, but a fairly simple fix. The timer is great. Uh, what we found is that you, so far, you don't need to run it for very long because it is fairly a, a very agitated process for the greens to go through, but it cleans them really, really well. Uh, we're very happy with that, and I think we'll have some more lessons learned on this in the future, but uh, this works really nice. So here we have the spinner and how this works. Uh, we actually have this container here, and it's just a, a food safe container that we've cut the, the handles off. And you slip that in there like so. We hit the on button, put the spin only, and go. And then it goes through its balancing act here. And uh, this is again, I'll, I'll just talk while this is going, but this is another one where I'd like to make this better, but the computer's in my way. Uh, what we really want is just a switch where you go thunk, and it just starts spinning. And that would be nice. Uh, there goes the spin. And uh, this has, this, the computer in this washer has a 13 minute spin cycle and there's no way you need it to go for 13 minutes. Uh, and you certainly don't need it to go up to its full speed because that's just crazy fast. Um, this is just getting started and we found that you need to let it go for about 4 minutes and eventually it starts going faster and faster and faster. But um, it works. It does a good job. It uh, is way better than doing it by hand. And just turn that off. Back up here, stay dry. Okay, here we go. Okay. So we also put in uh, just a little walkway right here at the request of the operator, Mrs. Martian, uh, so that she can go from one side to the other very easily. Uh, that resulted in us spreading out the line, so you do have a few more seconds to walk from one place to the other, but you save a bunch of time by being able to go around. That was a big deal. So we have power coming up there, all waterproof container, and then uh, we have the pressure washer valve right here uh, controlled, and then we have the main drain valve, we have water coming in, and then we have the washer drain right there all going into the main drain system. Here's the uh, drying rack, you've seen this before, uh, so that's very nice, works really, really well. Uh, the biggest problem that we have, we kind of knew about it, is just cleaning this off. Get a little brush here, we can just clean it off like that and get the little uh, little pieces off. This is also on a timer, so you can come, just hit that, everything turns on. We got one fan that died, uh, DOA from Amazon, so we'll get that replaced, but all the other fans work. Fans have three settings, low, medium, and high. We found that low works uh, just fine. Turn that off. So uh, it's very, very nice having this. And here we are, back to the packaging area and then the storage area. So you might be wondering, uh, you know, if this is worth it, uh, if all this work was worth what we were doing before, and I actually have some numbers. Uh, Mrs. Martian, uh, she writes down the process so that we can do continuous improvement, and she's keeping time of each of the steps she took. And originally, it was taking her eight hours uh, to do processing of, I think it was about like eight trays. It, it wasn't very many at all. Um, eight hours is the number. And she used this for the first time yesterday, not knowing fully how to use it, uh, meaning we haven't learned the best way to use it yet, uh, and we still have improvements to make. She went from eight hours to two hours. Awesome. Six hours saved by going to this process. Definitely, definitely worth it. So if you're going to do microgreens on a big scale, you definitely want to go and do something like this, get it all in place. Uh, definitely worth it. Now, uh, to the engineer types, the mechanical types out there, you're probably already noticing that we do have some challenges on this. There are still some things that can be improved. Uh, I welcome your comments on how we can improve this. Uh, we already have some ideas of things that we'd like to do. We'll do that in a future video. Uh, but right now, the six hours time saving using this process is definitely el bueno. Uh, and so we're going to keep using it and we're going to learn how to use it better and then we're going to create a backlog of things that we want to make improvements on. So very very happy with how this turned out. 
Um, like I said, we got some improvements to make still, but six hours. I mean, you can't argue with six hours. That's definitely worth it. So I hope you really enjoyed this series. Uh, if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We welcome your feedback on our videos, uh, how we could do better on them. We really appreciate that. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter if you like. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian. Out.